So this is gonna be more of a lecture. Uh, I'm gonna give you nine tips to help you succeed. Succeed in nunchucks maybe, succeed in your flow arts, succeed in something else. These tips are fairly universal. Um, and I don't know if you've noticed this or not, it depends on how long you've been doing this, but you will find that as you start learning flow, you can apply the same philosophies for how you learn and how you make mistakes to your whole life. So the things I'm about to teach you, you can apply all around. The first, which I think is extremely important, especially if you're starting something new, is to understand your learning style. For instance, I'm a hands-on person. If I have a pen, I'm kind of the kind of guy that would look at it from all angles. I would feel, how does it feel kinesthetically in my hands? It's this feeling uh, that I use in order to understand something. So I have to make a lot of mistakes because whereas other people want to get as much information as, as, as they can, I'm fumbling around trying to see, hmm, can I do this? Can I do this? You know, uh, very mad scientist like. So the thing is, is if your strength is in learning from books or if your strength is in hearing it or if your strength is in touching it and using it or if it's more visual but not necessarily hands-on, if you don't understand the way that you learn, you won't be able to maximize how you understand how the, the data is presented to you, how the concepts are presented to you. So if I'm a hands-on person and I'm teaching this to you hands-on and you're a visual person, you're gonna struggle a little bit more because you have to, you'll either try to cram your understandings into how I'm teaching it or you're gonna have to figure out how to translate it. So the next question is how to translate it. Look, I'll give you a perfect example. Some people may have it easier if they read it in a book or in words. So. An example would be if I teach you something, you might actually type it up before you try to learn it. Type it up and try to understand what that typing means even before you pick up whatever, you know, the chucks. I mean, because that's what I've been teaching. But this could be with anything, again. So if you understand your learning style and you learn how to translate your experiences, the lessons that are coming at you into the way that you learn best, you'll optimize that training for sure. Number two is a huge one, and I use this one all the time get out of your own way. Just get out. Um, what I always say is, uh, when I used to write music all the time, I used to say the music has its own mind, its own thoughts. It's your baby. It's not something that you own once you breathe enough life into it. And it's the same with training. It's the same with everything else. So part of getting out of your own way is understanding what this art needs more than what you want for it. Uh, a good example is when I was a musician, I used, when I get like a new guitar or a new, a new synthesizer or something, I try to throw it in every song because I love this new sound, but that's not what the song actually needs. That's not what it always needs. What it needs it could be something totally different. And so for you, instead of trying to impose these things that you want, sometimes you, you create it, you stop and you listen and you analyze and say, what do I really need? So in terms of nunchucks, if you wanna learn this advanced crazy move, go ahead, go for it. But if you don't know the fundamentals of those moves, you might spend three to five times longer trying to teach yourself this move, whereas what you really needed was to understand the fundamental first. And with that, you could have, if you learn the fundamental, it may have opened up a bunch of extra moves, a, a lot of options that you may not have even considered just because what you needed or what the art needed was to first understand the basic building blocks. Understand your ABCs before you learn to spell, right? Otherwise, you're just looking at shapes and you're, you're copying it, but you may not understand why or how it, how it exists. And understanding why something is there is almost as important, if not more important, than actually doing it. Because once you understand how things are created in the background, once you understand the building blocks and the theory behind it, that's when you can start modifying it and making your own. Now, that's not to say you can just poke and do random things and hope that it works. However, if you understand the theory behind things, if you understand why things are the way they are, then you can do it very quickly. You'll be able to come up with new moves, new techniques, your own style. You'll be able to understand and look at other people and break apart what they're doing as well. So getting out of your own way has a great deal to do with just looking at what it is that you're studying and making sure that you're giving it what it actually needs to grow. Um, another thing about getting out of your own way, it could also be an emotional thing, and I won't get into this too much, but getting out of your own way, especially when it comes to fears, I'll, I'll give an example. Say, say you wanted to really get a gig or you wanted to really be considered for something, right? You wanted to be considered for a, a, a group or a performance or something and you get turned down. Uh, your personal feelings could get in your way. You could feel hurt to the point where you wanna quit 
And that is you getting in your way of your training. That is you getting in the way of your art. And that's not to say that it's, I mean, it's perfectly okay to feel that hurt. By all means, it is. And I mean, there's been times that I've wanted to quit as well, but that's still me getting in my own way. That's, that's what I wanted from my art. That's my ego or that's my desires. And they've definitely created this wall because I wanted something, I didn't get it, and now I'm taking it out on my art. I'm blaming my art. So getting out of your own way also means just making sure you make that separation and you keep that art as pristine as possible. Just treat it like it's its own entity and you'll understand what I mean by getting out of your own way. This could be anything. Again, this could be relationships. Like sometimes what you want from your partner isn't necessarily what they can give and you've got to get out of your own way. Otherwise, you're not really listening to them. You're not really honoring who they really are. And I mean, let's be honest, like what's a relationship without that? It could be anything. It could be, well, I, I, I could keep going, but let's go to number three, okay? So one is understand the way you learn. Two, get out of your own way. Three, oh, it's kind of covered in two, but it's it still needs to be addressed. Foundations. Foundations, foundations, foundations. So, uh, the problem that I see with a lot of new people is that they, tr it's like you see this flight of stairs and they're just like leaping up the whole flight, just whoosh in one jump and then they trip and they fall and they fall down all the flights of stairs. So one step at a time would mean the most boring part is usually in the beginning. It usually is because it's just like, it's just like anything. It's like learning your ABCs, you know, learning your one, two, threes. If you don't know actually the alphabet before you try to spell words, then you're just kind of fumbling with the words. So it's very important to understand your foundations, especially in nunchucks or anything else. I find that life is actually very simple. It's so simple. It's complicated. And, uh, in most cases, in most cases, uh, it's a foundation. It's the simple things. It's the simple answers. It's so important to have those simple things. So we often think too complicated. We often move and think in various dimensions and degrees. But if you don't have foundations, what you won't realize is all those complicated thoughts are really just a bunch of two or three, maybe five even very simple foundations combined together. So complex things are really just simple things stacked together. So it seems complex. And it seems even more complex if you don't know what those foundations are. You won't understand how things are built. Again, we can talk about just, just about any kind of uh, advanced or expert trick. It's just a bunch of simple things that have been so fine-tuned and they're combined together in a way and presented in a way where it just seems fresh and it seems like mind-blowing. But if you can really break it down into little pieces, it, everything is just little chunks, little bite-sized chunks. So really focus on those foundations. If you're not sure what to practice, practice your foundations. It can always, always get better. There's always something that you can work on with a foundation. Okay, number four is also another important one. Um, again, this goes with business, this goes with training, this goes with art, this goes with everything that I can think of. And that's, there's two focuses when we wanna improve something. Optimization and innovation. And optimization means that you are making it more efficient. If you wanna optimize something, you will take it and you'll make it cleaner. Like if I wanted to nunchuck, I'll have more control. Uh, my planes will lock in a little bit better. I'll be able to feel every single motion and not lose the sense of control. So you have enhanced control, you have enhanced sensitivity, your speed, the strength, the power that you bring in, all of that is optimization. So you're taking something and you're just improving it. And it's subjective. So to some degree, optimization is subjective, but at the same time, it's definitely, it's definitely noticeable. I mean, there's definitely some sort of objectivity that happens here because someone that has fun, like Bruce Lee said, you know, if you're the man that does 10,000 kicks once or if you're the man that does one kick 10,000 times, it's gonna be that one kick 10,000 times because he's developed that level of sensitivity, that level of control and that level of power that it doesn't come with someone that just does a wide variety of things. You know, there's gonna be this special understanding. And there's, there's a dichotomy to this, of course, but we'll just keep it at that for now. So optimization is about taking something and make it better, more efficient, stronger, more powerful. The other thing is innovation, because let's be honest, this is art, right? And 
And it's the same with life. Like if you live life as a machine, then you can only think about optimization and you'll be fine. But what innovation is, is innovation is taking ideas. Well, I like just to say it, just making it yourself, making it unique, making it original, making it say something. So you're just not copying what you're seeing, uh, what you've experienced. It's just not like this stamped photocopy that goes over and over again, because I mean, realistically speaking, we're human. We have feelings. Optimization is, is how we build off of that. So, uh, if we're talking flow, I mean, uh, optimization is the training state and innovation is the play state, the play state where we come up with new ideas and we drop a lot. We make tons of mistakes and it's sloppy and it's messy and we learn something. We learn about how we intuitively create stuff when we're in this state. We learn about all the possibilities of what is presented to us. There's this great learning that happens with innovation. And we can go again, this, this all goes back to everything. Like, let's say we apply that to a job. Like how do you do your job better? Or how do you bring in new elements into your job to make it more unique, more original, more enticing in a relationship? It's kind of the same thing too. You know, how do you, how do you optimize like how you communicate, how you communicate, how you get along, you know, how do you optimize when you argue? And then innovation is how do you bring in something new to keep it fresh, to keep it spicy, to keep it feeling powerful, you know? So like, again, this is very universal. If you just think outside the box, I'm presenting it in training, but it really, it, this really could be anything. So optimization, innovation, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, number five, learn from everything. And this will require you to be a little bit of an artist. It's kind of, it me sound like a no-brainer. I learned from everything. So generally speaking, if you hang around people that are successful, you'll generally create the mindset of successfulness, uh, generally. And if you read more books about success, you'll generally have more of a perception of what it would take to be successful, right? That's pretty simple. That's usually the easy stuff is, is you hang around and I mean, your brain is food, like, or you're not brain, your thoughts are food and your experiences are food. So what you feed it is going to determine how you see the world. And, and, you know, if you feed it full of like junk food, if you feed it full of things that just are throwaway, then that's where you're going to be. And you're going to be trapped in that cycle. So a lot of times perspective is really just based on how, what you're surrounding yourself around. And it's really important to think about this because if you don't have the right environment, you won't be able to grow in the right way. So one of the most important things is to surround yourself around people, thoughts, books, even the things you see, the things you read. It even includes avoiding, avoiding certain things that trigger you or make you go backwards, avoiding, you know, certain social media sites. If you just browse through it and you feel, you know, upset because you're not these people. I mean, these are things, everything you feed yourself is going to be where you're going to end up going. It's going to affect your perspective. So that's one part of learning from everything. The next part of learning from everything is not only do we want to learn what to be, we want to learn what not to be. And this one's going to be a little bit more important because you may find that you may not like certain aspects. You may go through some dark times. You may go through some things that are really difficult. And those are actually some of the most important times. It's just like when you drop a nunchuck because you try a trick. Do you quit or do you keep going? Do you learn from those drops? Do you learn from those mistakes? Are you embarrassed about something so you want to like not think about it? Jump in the center of it and understand because that is where the big lessons are. The big lessons are in your mistakes. It's really easy to be cool when everything is going your way. So when the mistakes happen, that's when you get to see yourself. You can see yourself with your back against the wall, you get to see yourself frustrated, and you can, you can optimize how you can get out of that and get back up and keep going. So learning from everything also means taking the difficult things and understanding how you can learn, create it into a lesson so you can move forward. I'm not saying be a robot, I'm not saying like, uh, you can't feel frustrated if you've been trying this chuck move for two weeks straight and just can't nail it. But I am saying if you don't get that lesson, you'll keep repeating it. So what you can do is even today, just make a list of 10 different people, 10 different people that you think are awesome, that you look up to, that you want to understand a little bit more. And then just ask just a few questions. Most of the time, they're more than happy to help. And that will give you insight. And you can build your, your diagram to success based on some of the things that they've told you. Now, it's very true that you have to take what works and discard what doesn't. So what works for them may not work for you. You have to understand that. But at the same time, this could be super helpful. Okay, there's just a few more. We are at number six. Number six is that we, you focus on what to get 
you focus on what you want to get from your art only as much as what you want to put in. And what, what I'm trying to say is like, if you focus too hard as what you get from your art, like if I train really hard and I'm like, I want to be a performer, if you focus too hard on, am I becoming a performer? Am I becoming this? Then it'll create unnecessary, it'll put you in your way. We'll go back to get out of your own way. It can create a lot of stress and frustration that does not need to exist. But if you focus on what you get only to understand how much more you can put in, not only will this help you, but this will actually optimize your training. So what that means is, when I'm training, when I'm training and I do improve, I look at that improvement to say, okay, what options did this just open up with me? If you start looking at how it opens up options, then all of a sudden your training becomes, you know, if you get there, amazing. Like all of a sudden you have all these new options, but if you don't get there, you're not focused on that. You're just, you just keep training you keep adapting and keep moving at that level and you're still okay. Now, if you're focused on what you get, to that degree, to, to another degree, then uh, basically what would happen is if you don't reach the levels that you think in your head that you want to, it could leave you just down a road where, again, you get in your own way. You might be frustrated. You might take a break. You might quit. You might burn out. There's a lot of different things. So it's really important to keep your expectations in check. But at the same time, you want to have some sort of goal. You always want to keep goals, but just make sure your expectations don't get in your way. Okay, number seven is discipline, discipline, discipline. Every day, do it every day, you guys. Okay, you brush your teeth every day, right? You comb your hair every day. You throw on different clothes, don't you? Do you take a shower every day? I don't know, some of you guys do, some of you guys don't. Um, five minutes a day, like if you, have, if you have no time at all, five minutes a day, do it like a, a toothbrush. Just do it like right before you go to bed. And so if you have five minutes, if you just focus those five minutes and make it a hardcore five minutes, you can get some good training. And I remember uh, when I was in music college, there was a, a story about a, a guy that went to prison. I can't think of who it was. And all he did in prison was he created his own, uh, his own t techniques that he could do to make sure that his guitar chops were fast, that it was good so he wouldn't lose it. So, you know, he served his pr prison sentence or jail sentence. And once he gets out, he was still at the same level just because he just created his own chops. He just did his own thing. He didn't even need the guitar. But when he got out, he just continued where he left off. And I think a lot can be said about discipline and doing it every day regardless if you feel it or not. I mean, if you feel like doing something, that's fantastic. But most of the time, I would say a lot of successful people don't wait for inspiration. They make it. And if they don't make it, they do it anyways. And it'll eventually come. I find inspiration mostly comes after I've worked hard. Sometimes they get it before. You guys have all had this though, where you've been inspired to do something, right? You're inspired to do something and you finally get around to doing it and then, you can't nail the move that you thought in your head and then it just all inspiration goes out the window. So do you stop? Do you get frustrated? No, you keep going. You keep going, you keep doing this thing regardless. And I think that's really important to, to realize. Do it anyways, even if it's just five minutes, even if you don't feel like it, even if you're not happy about it, because once it becomes a part of your life, it's just like you know having kids or having a relationship or having friends, it's, it's the same thing. You're gonna have ups and downs, right? Doesn't mean anything about that relationship though, right? Like you could have a bad time with your friends. It doesn't mean anything, right? I mean, you can just, you can get through it usually is what I'm trying to say. And it's the same thing. Do it every day. Um, there's two more and these are pretty simple ones. Um, the next one is always adapt, always adapt. It's, it's like in martial arts and when you get ready to spar someone, you know, and you throw your hits, you have this idea for a combo that's going to land and nothing's working, change your strategy. That doesn't mean stop fighting, it means change your strategy. So you may come in with an idea, right? Don't give up the battle, but change your plans. Um, you may have an idea for a move or you may have an idea for where you want to be and it may not be realistic or it may not even be optimized for your learning style. It may not be for you. It may be for someone else, you know? So what the adaptation would be listening and saying, okay, maybe this wasn't right for me, but this is, and that's what good listening does is it puts you in reality, okay? So you have these ideas for what you want and then you have reality. And your goal, your goal with this is to go right down the middle. So that way you can bend reality a little bit and you have to reshape your ideas a little bit and then that becomes reality. So like reality right now could be, I don't know this move and the other could be, I wanna be able to do 10 flips and catch this behind my back, you know, while I'm upside down but the, the actual reality, you may have to like compromise and meet in the middle. Once you meet there, you can slowly bend it towards your ideas, but it's generally a good idea to always adapt, always shift and move 
Um, th there's nothing more fluid than water, right? And it gets around everything, focus like that. The last thing I want to I want to talk about is if you are trying to reach something, if you are trying to make a mark or be on, uh, you know, if you're trying to make a mark or if you're trying to be recognized, generally speaking, I would say um, business wise, you, there's two things to focus on. One is being the best. Now, the best is not actually the best. You could think you're the best, but if no one else thinks you're the best, then you're not the best. Best is a silly term because <laughs> it doesn't exist, but it does to the minds of everyone that, ex that experiences you or someone else. It's this relative scale that doesn't exist, right? So best is often a dog eat dog, everyone's chasing for the top kind of thing. But at the same time, if you can put yourself up high in people's minds, they will refer to you more. So one is being the best or being perceived as the best or being perceived as very high, you know, on that totem pole. If you can create that perception, then it will help you with business. Again, this is, this is just a little business thing I wanted to explain to you. The other is being unique. So this is the one I generally like. I don't like being the best because that means I'm going to have to compare. Like, I don't like the comparisons that happen. Uh, that I do to myself if I try to like rise to the top. But when I'm unique, I focus on my unique strengths. I focus on presenting it in my unique way. I don't care about what other people are doing. I just try to figure out what I can do for myself. Now, there's, you know, there's definitely a marriage between that because when I find something that I can do myself, I want to be the best at it that I can be. And that best is obviously every day. Like every day that bar rises as I rise. So, you know, that's how it goes. And then maybe something happens, maybe I get an injury, and then I'm all the way down there. I also, when we go back, we have to get out of our own way to reset that bar and start again. Um, so best and unique. So those are, there's a lot of tips. This has been a long lecture, but these are tips I think that, sh that could really help. Um, how you approach your training, how you approach your life is often much more important than actually what's happening in your life because that's how you process it. Those experiences, your perceptions, your ideas about your experiences, that's gonna be what tells you I had a good life or I had a bad life or I had a good training session or I had a bad training session. Two people could have the same training session. One could, one person could think it was crap while the other person thinks, wow, you know, it was tough but I made some improvements and while another one's like, whoa, that was amazing. Just look at beginners when they first pick up, pick up any prop uh, compared to someone who's done it for a while. If they can't, if they both can't do the same move, one's gonna still be like ready to go while the other's gonna be a little frustrated and vice versa. So just stay a student, stay humble, try your best to just keep adapting, keep moving, keep learning. And on top of that, if you have any questions, leave me a comment, send a message. I think I've pretty much had a shotgun of ideas and obliterated you guys, but it's been a while and I really, really wanted to talk about this. So hope you all are doing well and talk to you soon.